A great morning out there. Welcome once again to another live broadcast. This is the Gathering of the Saints. This is the Potter's Gate online broadcast. Of course, this is where we gather to hear the voice of God, the prophetic intentions of God for our day, for our lives, for our nation, for, and of course, for our generation. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking expressly to us. We are picking the frequencies of the voice of God from all areas and direction. Once again, this morning, by the grace of God, in the next few minutes, I'm just going to allow the Spirit of God to lead us further into the expression of His mind for this brand new day. Welcome. Join us this day, all right, as we continue to track the sound of the Spirit of this brand new day. Heaven is speaking to us. The Lord is showing us the path to light again. We are walking in the newness of his desire and of his demand for this brand new day. Welcome. Thank you so much, Brother Derek, for joining this morning. And anyone out there who will be joining us this morning, it's an honor and a great privilege to invite you and, of course, to welcome you as we take this ride together this morning. Wherever you're watching from, from wherever you're connecting from, all right, I pray this morning that this word will resonate with your spirit. Today has been such a time of great impartation in my personal life, in my home and family. And uh, of course, and I'm still, you know, putting some uh, uh, words together. We're still doing some writings and the spirit of God is just taking us deeper and deeper into the reality of the heart of God for this brand new day. We've been tracking for the past uh, few days now on having a clarity of the sound of this brand new day. Once again, this morning, I felt I need to just expand more on that. But before we do that, let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Father, for the gathering of the saints. Thank you, Father, for the declarations of your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. We hear the sound. Let the sound of God go forth. Let the sound of the new day be heard across the earth. Let there be an awakening in our hearts again. Spirit of the living God. We have come to hear. We've come to listen. We've come to respond. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Father, we prophesy to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. We proclaim, let the sons of righteousness arise. Let the daughters of Zion be awakened. Let the sons of God gather in this corporate reality of the building of the house of God. We thank you, Father. We honor your holy name. Thank you, Father, for what you have established. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day, this morning light. Thank you, Father, for, yes, the day is dawning again in our hearts. We are seeing, we are coming, oh God, to the, yes, Lord, to, to that twilight of the breaking of the day. Thank you for the sun of righteousness that is rising upon our hearts. Thank you, Father, for that which you call the bright and the morning star. We are hearing, we are picking the signal, we are seeing, yes, Lord, the directions and the leading of this glorious light. Yes, these realities of these two glories, the glory of the, of the sun and the glories of the star. Thank you, Father. They are all shining and rising within our hearts. We are aligning again to the desires and to the counsels of heaven for our day. 
It's a privilege once again to share this space with you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Sister Johnny. Thank you, everyone, wherever you're joining from this morning. Those that will be listening to this broadcast later on, I'm sure so many have gone to various places of fellowship. Well, we encourage that. We pray that we have more fellowship that will speak the heart of God and speak the mind of God. More than ever before, the people of God needs to be equipped, needs to be trained, needs to be encouraged, needs to be empowered, but also needs to be, you know, a, a re rejuvenated in the light of this word that is coming to us in this brand new day so we all amen are presenting ourselves unto god as a worthy instrument amen and vessels yes they said new wine can only be poured into new wine skin so it's my prayer this morning that as people go out there that that which they will be drinking that which they will be partaking amen will be coming from that new wine skin yes it's our desire this day that we'll continue to have new wine skin ministries out there so thank you so much everyone for joining now we've been dealing with some very important principles that I felt I need to you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, relay again and 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 bring to to the fore again. We've been talking about, all right. In fact, we've been talking about several things. But the things we've been dealing with in the past, you know, one week plus. In, in fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. You know, um, last Monday. Yes, last Monday there was a public holiday. So while I was on my way to, you know, uh, uh, to. Uh, um, table mountain with my family the lord began to steer my heart regarding amen being able to receive here the clarity of the sound of this new day or of course we are in a time where okay people are in that state of wanting to go back to normalcy you know just want to you know do things you know, want to you know carry out things you know just want to you know let, let's just go back because people are people's life have been devastated you know by this you know pandemic so many things have happened so there is that sense of wanting to just get back and just do something and carry out something and get to work you know you know restore the economy and all of that you know and and that's understandable but in the things of the spirit we cannot be reactive in all right in our in our in our engagement we cannot because of course that's what the devil wants us to do he wants us to be reactive all right now that you know the lockdown has been eased all right now we are level one very soon the whole you know idea of the levels will be removed okay so you find people going back into that rat race again into that cat race again everybody's trying to make something work make something and if we do that then we are playing to the gallery we're playing to you know the lies of the enemy we've got to understand that all of this amen have been have been planned all right to 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 push us to a point to a place where we get distracted we get you know weak we get you know discouraged and of course because when you're doing things you know like samson said he said i will i will i will go back and do the way i used to do the bible says and samson did not know that the lord has left him and so when we say that is a new day when we say amen that the values of this new day amen has changed when we say that the voice of god amen has changed the way of his speaking and the way of engagement has changed when we say that is a new earth that we we're living in today it's important that we understand that context that we don't just respond amen based on the usual way the old ways we used to respond so god began to speak to me and say tell my people to understand all right the the, the, the accuracy and the and the and the and the frequency to which amen i am speaking from you need to let them understand amen the way in which i am speaking all right so clarity is important all right it's not just hearing voice it's not just you know picking signals here and there and responding no we've got to know we've got to clear insight there must be amen what the scripture call amen a clear distinct sound so being able to fine tune our spirit thank you so much my dear sister I, 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 again on this morning bolangile thank you so much i appreciate the, your connection this morning everyone joining us this morning thank you uh, uh my dear sister everyone thank you so much all right we we're looking at this and i'm hoping i'm praying that i'm believing god that we will have a better you, you notice the way god is helping us to build we are building amen the bible says wisdom builds a house this house must be built amen based on the pattern of wisdom we cannot build amen by our own idea we cannot build by the old you know uh, uh, concept of how we define life how we define church all right the realities of the days that we're living in amen the kind of complex challenges that are before us re it requires that we step back and ask the lord to grant us you know understanding and insight to how to engage again 
please do me a favor could you share this link all right to your friends to your loved ones all right just let people know that god is speaking again to us all right because this is a day where we have to listen we've got to know one of the beauty amen of the prophetic ministry is the ability to give clarity is the ability to bring precision to bring accuracy to bring amen the voice of god to the people in such a way that is clear it doesn't necessarily mean that they will accept it <laughs> You know, my, my issue is not about you accepting it. My issue is to be able to bring the clarity of God's, of God's voice, of God's word, amen, into your space. That is what I am, you know, about. That is my primary assignment, all right? That when you hear God, that you are not hearing a muffled sound. That is that is my purpose, all right? I, I'm not about, okay, are, are they gonna like it? Yeah, no, no, I've, I've gone beyond that, you know, order. I've, I've gone beyond that level where, you know, you want to preach for people to like. No, 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 it's not about you liking it or don't liking it. It's about, amen, God speaking and there is somebody in the earth that can hear what God is saying and can relay what God has said without distortion without distortion that is what we're looking for all right because it's from there that you can then have amen the opportunity to make a choice all right you cannot choose where everything is you know muffled you cannot drink from a polluted stream you cannot drink amen from a stale a stale bread a bread that is already you know you know you know rejected you can't you can eat from that all right so we want to heaven is preparing a table before us the bible says he prepared a table amen for me in the presence of my enemy i mean th th that is a paradox how do you prepare a table in the presence of of you know of the enemy uh, god is proving the point so we have to understand that heaven amen has prepared a table and we are now being invited amen to sit how we eat how we drink amen would depend on how we we are able to you know connect how we are able to understand how we are able to relay and, and relate to what has been presented so my, my, my responsibility is to be able to present to you, amen, the, 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 the now world, the relevant voice of God for this brand new day. That's my intention. That is the ministry of the prophet. In the days that we're living in, we are redefining, amen, the prophetic ministry. All right? The prophetic is being revamped. The prophetic is being, you know, rebuilt. It's being energized. It's being re-empowered because God cannot speak. The earth cannot advance and prosper without, amen, one call to to hear to speak and to relay the voice of god the prophetic ministry it is crucial to the building of the house of god we cannot have amen a house that is going to function we cannot have amen a business growing and develop we cannot have amen to the occasion without amen a clear and call without a clear directive without a clear instruction from the throne of grace so how we connect to god amen those that have been ordained to connect to god to hear to speak amen the voice of god so that they can you know they can relay what god have spoken amen to you know to the city to the nation amen is critical in this brand new day all right so even in the ministry of the prophetic there is a there is a major change and renovation that is taking place all right we read the scripture the last time maybe we should we should go back to that scripture again first corinthians first corinthians chapter uh chapter uh, uh chapter seven let's say chapter seven no first corinthians chapter 14. let's see how we can quickly get to first corinthians chapter 14. i was actually planning to open to first corinthians 13 uh, 14. i opened to something else that is fine thank you all for joining this morning it's it's nice to have you all connect with us please continue to share the link if you can invite your friends uh, particularly those people who have been you know uh, discouraged and uh, disillusioned who don't go to church again i know there are a lot of them and that's why god has positioned me basically majorly for those people all right so that uh, we can help them to make the transition back to the church some people think all oh, right this guy doesn't go to church M maybe maybe he's missed god maybe i should help you to understand all right why i don't go to church why this is my church because there are people today all right who, who are no longer going to church but you've got them amen online and you've got them close to about you know the last time i i, I was you know i was doing a research about people who don't go to church that are on online you know close to close to 900 now 
The last time was 900,000, if I'm not mistaken. Just, you know, in, in our continent, you know, the few that I can, I can, you know, relate to. But if you talk about a global trend, I mean, you're talking to millions. So what are we going to do to those millions? Are we just going to leave them and let them go to hell? All right. And let the devil continue to destroy. So we've got to understand the strategies of God. All right. God is, God is redirecting. God is, God is restructuring how we interact, how we connect. Amen. The idea of church, amen, is changing. I still believe in a place where we can physically meet and gather and pray together and hold hands together. Amen. And, and crown each other's shoulder and laugh together. I believe so much, amen, in the community of the saints. But I also believe that there is a community out there that are disconnected. I believe there's a community out there that are confused, that are disillusioned, that don't know what to do, that are, you know, not in fact, not because they are backslidden, but because they just don't know how to move forward. So they decide to stay home. And some of them will listen to people like me. You will not believe the number of people that are following us from different parts of the world. This morning, I was just taking the stacks. It's amazing. I mean, it is amazing when you look at people following you from America, from Germany. This morning, I saw people following from another country that I don't even know about. You understand? People are searching people are hungry there is a quest out there there are a lot of people following us from Africa here you would think okay people go to church yes they go to church but listen people are no longer you know are no longer stupid they're no longer foolish they are searching they are searching amen outside the walls they are they are they are, they are pressing into dimensions amen that has been made open and available for them all right to be resource to be built so let not somebody say well this guy is trying to uh, 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 promote an idea of people not going to church no no no, no, but I know that this is also church. So how we how we understand God and His move in this season has to has to go beyond the little box that we have created. God is jumping jumping out of our religious box. God wants a people, Amen, that will build church for Him in the marketplace. God is looking for a company of people that will build a church for Him online, Amen. This is a cyber church, and I hope one of these days that we'll be able to translate some of the things that we're doing, Amen, online, Amen, to a, you know a physical location, all right because indeed if I can transform and empire your life, if I can build you, if I can resource you, if I, if I can build certain things in you, you just need to go to wherever you are and reduplicate that, alright, that's all that's all my job is done so while we are dealing with some of the things the spirit of god is saying and emphasizing it is important we understand the prophetic context of this brand new day you know so some of the most powerful people today are some of the most powerful companies the most richest company guess what they, they don't even have physical they don't have physical you know uh, location they are mobile and I know, maybe one of these days we'll talk about that some of the most powerful individuals that can wreck a whole nation all they have is is just is just an ipad some of them is just a laptop but they can shut down the economy of a whole nation just because these people amen they have certain insight they they have certain resource you know at their you know at, at their disposal some of the people all right that can that can collapse a whole nation all right all they have is just a phone just with their phone they can cause damage now that is something that we have to look into God is raising a new company of people that are resource house. God is looking for men and women whose, whose life, amen, has been, has been branded by the Spirit. Whose dimension of existence, amen, has no limit or boundary except the one God placed there. That wherever they go, they, they, they are able to express the life of God. They are able to express the power of God. I hope you understand that the things of God are not limited to geography, are not limited to, you know, some location, amen. We flow like rivers hallelujah our life is a dimension of a mountain that people cannot you know ignore we are we are we are developing into a dimension of life amen that is becoming that stone that is cut without human hand something is happening in our day and it is important that i prep us that i you know begin to allow us to understand amen the nature of the days that we live in the enemies that we're dealing with today are no longer you know located in some place amen the enemy that 
that we're dealing with are mobile. The enemy that we're dealing with are systemic. The enemies that we're dealing with, the concept of corruption that we're dealing with, all right, you can't, you, it, it will be difficult for you to track them, to trace them. So you have to be in their space to understand how to deal with them. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, we have to move beyond the human space. Flesh and blood is human. We have to move be beyond the human space and begin to interact, hallelujah, with heavenly realities and begin to deal with things, amen, in dimensions that influence people. If you're dealing with people, then you, 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 then you do not understand what God is doing. If, if all you're focusing about or focusing on is just people, you've got to deal with, amen, what influences people. You've got to deal with, amen, what touches people, what changes people, what makes people make change their mind, what makes people start doing certain things or not engaging again in certain things. We have to deal with what is behind the veil. We have to deal with, amen, the, the, the back ends, amen, of, of, of human life. That's what we're dealing with. So all of the things that we are dealing with, right, is dealing with the realms of the spirit, is dealing with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we are dealing with. And those are the things we'll continue to look into and how that translates into a working tools that allow us to go out there and represent God. To me, I think that is church. And one of these days, we're going to have good times again. Amen. But let's continue to look at some things the Lord, amen, is speaking to us. The issue of clarity of sound, the issue of clarity of the voice of God, the issue, amen, of understanding, of, of aligning to the perspective of the Spirit, the issues, amen, of positioning ourselves in, in such a way that we become, you know, true, true reflectors, true representatives, amen, of the activities of God in the earth. Those are the things that we are dealing with. And I think it's important because if we don't know how God speaks and when God speaks then we don't know how to respond then we don't know how to build then we don't know how to advance how to how to engage how to how to navigate amen the, the difficult terrains of the days that we live in it is important So being able to hear God, being able to hear, hear God and understand what he's saying at every season in time, all right, it's critical to how we move further, how we engage. You see, sound, the sound of heaven is what we're dealing with, all right? Remember, God has been speaking to us about the restoration. Remember, we're dealing, all of this is still under the concept of, amen, coming out of the ark. We're dealing with issues. We're dealing with, you know, complex issues in regards to how to engage the earth again. In engaging the earth, we need an altar. In engaging the earth, we need a priesthood. In engaging the earth, that priesthood, amen, must carry an authority, must be able to be well-dressed, must be able to have a standing in the earth. All right? Jesus said, we read a scripture some if you, few, few weeks ago. Jesus said, I have given you authority. But this authority cannot function outside, amen, the order, the priesthood of God, the things of God, amen, uh, 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 flow in the direction, in the order of God's, you know, uh, divine protocol. That is a protocol that allow. when God says, I give you authority, you can't just go claim the authority and start, <laughs> you know, and try to exercise. It's not going to work. Authority, amen, must align with a, a priesthood. We must align with an altar. Authority must align, must connect to certain dimensions, amen that allow us to function and to to express the intentions of god you see so it, it's not enough to say well I, i've been given authority that's why authority is given but they say first you've got to go to, and, and be taught you've got to go and be developed the bible says even though he was a son earlier he had to be surrendered he had to be submitted he had to go through tutorship the tutorship listen he's got authority he's a prince one day he's going to be a king, but he cannot exercise that authority except certain things are built in him, except certain dimension, amen, of his existence, of his posture, of his, of his, of his, of his humanity, hallelujah, as aligned to the position where he becomes, amen, and of a, a voice in the earth where he can exercise regency. 
the bible says amen as long as the child remains under tutors amen he cannot exercise authority he cannot come under the position of of leadership he can he, he has not come of age so there are things the spirit of god is teaching us in this twilight amen of this new day yes we know who we are yes we understand the position we understand that there are resources that have been given to us we understand that the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof we understand that we represent god in the earth but that understanding does not translate to reality halabashianda that understanding has not translated to reality yet and that is because we we are still babies <laughs> we are still immature we are still fast through and fro by every wind of doctrine our life is still being shifted and moved here and there by you know all kinds of emotions and challenges all right you know we have no standing we have no posture we have no of we we have no voice you understand we have authority but we have no voice so the enemy plays at us and laughs at us and just kicks us around because he knows that these people they have authority they don't even know how to use the authority so we have to once again learn if you will relearn we have to we have to be regrouped we have to be you know be reformed if you will we have to be transformed we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind the sense of our identity has to be rediscovered earlier we have to grow in stature Jesus grew in stature before he could exercise. You will not find Jesus at the age of at the age of 12, amen, casting demons. You will not find Jesus at the age of 12, amen, you know, binding and losing and healing and restoring. No, you will never find it in the scripture. He, but he knew who he was. He understood who he was. But the time had not come. Hallelujah. The time had not come. So he, he had to surrender. He had to submit to a time of training, a time of development, a time of building up. The Bible says, and the child submitted himself, amen, to his parents. And for the next, you know, couple of couple of years, hallelujah, he was being trimmed and being groomed. But guess what? The power is already in him. The authority is already in him. But he needed to grow. He needed to mature. What, what the church need right now, amen, is some time of training. We need, we need trainers. We need, like I said some time ago, we need the ministry of Ezra. We need teaching priests to, rest, to be restored back to the church. All right. I, listen, the, teach, the teachers are not the ones that are going to impart to you the grace to do what God wants you to do. No. What God wants you to do is already imparted in you. As I cannot give you, amen, you know, a, 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 another grace, another, you know, ministry gift. No, you already have it in you. Every child that is born, all right, before you were born in your mother's womb, heaven had already ordained what you're going to become. But guess what? They already also plan certain things that you need to go through, amen, so that that which you have been ordained for can come of age. You need to come of age and that's what we're talking about in the past you know three decades in the church we have seen an immature amen and, and, and you know a weak church amen that 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 do not understand amen the ways of god the things of the spirit and that's why we fall for everything that's why anybody come from anywhere and lie to us and push us here and there we fall for anything but now God is saying, I want my church to be rebuilt. I want my church to be empowered. I want my people, amen, to grow, to come of age. So that the things that I've been talking about, the things of the kingdom, can begin to find ex expression. Can find expression. People are going to go to church this morning. They will hear a powerful message. But they cannot utilize it. Because they are still children. They're still babies. We're given, we're, we're, we're given the children's the children's meat to immature people. They said, do not cast the pearl before the swine, lest they dash it to the ground, eat it, and pounce on you who give it to them. Amen. With a hiding, they give you a beating. They have no sense of value. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. We raise a church that is materialistic. They have no sense of spirituality. They have no sense of, you know, commitment and, and resilience. A church, amen, that can easily move at, at a scream. At, you know, the, the devil backs at them. They run. 
if we are going to engage the, the days that we live in we have to go and learn from david we have to learn from nehemiah we have to learn from amen the esters of this world we have to learn from the deborahs of this world we have to learn amen from from the elizabeth of this world we have to learn from the marys of this world we have to learn from the pauls of this world listen to this all of the things that we read in the scripture are not just nice fine you know historic messages they must become translated they must have a dwelling in our life our life must become our spirit must become amen a house for daniel a house amen for for for, for isaac for deborah a house where the grace of god the powers of god amen listen the powers of god are expressions of individual you know identity the power of god they said there's a power that must work and function via daniel there's a power in us that must work and function via david there is a power there's an authority that must work because all of the things those guys went through amen we all amen are also going to go through them and we have to learn the values the character the nature how they dealt with those things how they interacted amen how did daniel interacted in babylon how did moses interacted amen in the palace hallelujah of pharaoh how did deborah rose up in the day where men amen began to feel jittery and feel weak how did deborah rose up and led men to war we got to learn hallelujah how how elizabeth amen rose up and received the word of god and brought forth hallelujah one of the greatest prophets of our you know of, of our time how do we come into that reality those principles and process we have to know them all of these are part and parcel of the revelation of the anointing of christ so the christus anointing amen is an holistic anointing that is bringing us to maturity but all of this begins from being able to hear what is God saying? What is the clarion call? What is the expression? What is the sound of God for this brand new day? And when we don't understand that sound, then we should expect, amen, that we will be shut, amen, not to speak for a season in time, all right? Okay, so that we do not, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't bring doubt and we do not compromise what God wants to do. Some of us will try want to speak in this, in this new day, you just realize that the voice the voice is not coming the sound what do you, you I, I know what I want to say but I don't know how to say it yes because they have not given you amen the the, 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 the sound the mouth to speak oh, oh, you've got the mouth but they've not given you the voice and the sound to speak so they said shut his voice for a season that's Zachariah for you because God was gonna birth a prophetic season in the earth through John but amen this guy amen he's still living under the old order he's still living under the ironic priesthood this guy amen is still is still going to try to interpret what god is doing amen via his old mindset but god is going to use him but they say how we're going to use him is to make sure that first of all we shut his voice so he does not contaminate this thing <laughs> but that's not the time to be to be afraid You just need to understand so let's let's look at first corinthians 14. oh hallelujah bless the lord oh my soul mm. Now let's take it from verse uh, verse 7 that we, we've been taking it from for a while now. It said, even in the case of a lifeless thing that makes sound, such as pipe and harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction? Unless there's a distinction in the notes. Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clarion call, who will get ready for battle? so it is with you unless you speak intelligibly intelligibly i want you to know that word except you speak intelligibly all right intelligibly words with your tongue how will anyone know what you are saying so this is important to what god amen is doing in our day god is raising intelligent prophetic apostolic company god is raising a new order of saints that are intelligent intelligence is not just something that happens in the marketplace we need amen the spirit of intelligence to interact with the things of god to connect amen and and act and you know and interact in the spirit such that we're we're able amen to to clearly express verbalize amen what we have picked 
how many times have you heard things you've seen things but you have no understanding of what you've heard so they have to they have to bring you to a place where they train you have you noticed that Mo, excuse me yes even moses but let's let's look at saul you know saul heard the voice of god he understand on his way to Damas damascus whenever god wants to do something in the earth there is always a season of transition all right between those that he want that he has called that will carry this new thing amen there's always a season of transition between these people and all right and the period of training that prepares them amen to go out there to represent him Saul, amen heard the voice of god yes but guess what that voice led him to the house of a man aeneas his name the voice led him to the house of Aeneas. Amen. He heard God. He, he heard God. Hallelujah. He, he, he heard God. He saw the light. Hallelujah. And of course, at this time, he'd been plunged into, into blindness. But they led him to the house of one called Aeneas. This is important. What I'm talking about right now is very important. Because whatever is going to happen in the house of Aeneas would define and determine the next order, the next ministry. Amen. The next chapter. The next phase. Amen. The new reality. Amen. That this man is going to walk into Aeneas amen was the bridge that allowed Paul to launch into that apostolic day into that apostolic you know environment that he became amen a renowned you know a, a voice in the earth without Aeneas Paul hallelujah the almighty Paul the Paul that we all read is material I mean without Aeneas Paul would not have been able to do all the things that he did I'm talking about coming to a place where amen we have certain grace certain people in our life who, who will help us to fine tune to fine tune the sound we need amen we need like i was sharing yesterday we need people amen who 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 have been who have been skilled in the act hallelujah of fine tuning of tuning us to be able to hear to be able to say this is that i mean the the hand of god appeared on the wall in the palace of you know of of, of belshazzar guess what there was nobody in the entire land that could read such an handwriting they had to go and look for a grandmaster they had to go and look for one amen whom they said the spirit of the gods are the name no it's the spirit of the living god amen they have to go look for daniel we have to this is a day where we have to begin to look for amen the spiritual veterans we have to look for the fathers we have to look for those men that we have discarded those ministry that we have discarded those grace that we have discarded amen and we've we've run ahead of you know some shiny bling bling all right it's time to stop pursuing amen that which is just shiny but has no has no value hallelujah this is a time to go back and begin to say where where are the voice of God? They said, Oh king, there is a man in thy kingdom. <laughs> These are the days where we have to go begin to look, amen, for the Aeneas of this world. Paul, in his wildest imagination, would never have believed that there is one, amen, in the land, in the same place he was going to destroy. On his way to Damascus, there was a man in Damascus, Halabashyanda. His name is Aeneas. He's, 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 a, he's a father at the gate. He had the ability, hallelujah, to give, to restore sight. Have you noticed that it was God, hallelujah, who, who, who blinded Paul, but it was a man who, who restored his sight? <laughs> you didn't hear me. <laughs> there are people, hallelujah, that their voice in the earth is represent the voice of heaven. There are people in the earth, hallelujah, who represent, amen, the domain of God. It was God who shut the eyes of Paul. But it was a man by the name Aeneas who restored his sight. And such men, you have to look for them in this new day. I'm talking about... Being able to have clarity, being able to hear with clarity, being able to see. It's not like you're seeing things, you're seeing things, but you have no sense of, you have no understanding of what you're seeing. There's something called the spirit of understanding. Understanding is a spirit and it's coming to us as we connect and reconnect, amen, to the fathers at the gate. 
there are fathers at the gate that have been dispossessed this is the time earlier to go look for them this is the day of the restoration amen of true apostolic fathers these are days where we need to look for the Aeneas where we need to look earlier for amen for the men and the women that heaven has positioned to restore our sight so that we can begin to see we can begin to enter into the reality of what the Lord amen is doing in this brand new day or else we will be in the wilderness thinking that we are advancing we will be in the wilderness thinking that we are assuming we are, we are advancing whenever God wants to do something in the earth there is always somebody that he links or link link us with they were to make a man King Saul they were to make Saul hallelujah a leader he was to be a leader but they had to they had to they had to they had to direct him <laughs> they had to direct him to a man by the name amen samuel samuel was a man that god prepared hallelujah that was going to ordain him that was going to train him that was going to align him to his destiny heaven has spoken but there is a man that you've got to connect with there's a priesthood we've got to connect to that will that will prep us that will develop us that will make us ready and strong for that which amen we have been assigned for that which has been assigned sign in this new day there are people that heaven has position if you don't open your eyes you won't see them you won't know them you won't locate them you'll be running through and fro you'll be running out of scatter you'll be running from pillar to post amen they may just be there you will you walk past them every day but you don't see them because they are unassuming their dressing is unbecoming <laughs> amen they are they are they are prophets they are they are elders at the gate but they, there is nothing about their life hallelujah that reflect that they have to open your eyes to see them show me that man that god called that was not connected to somebody to restore his sight was it was it elisha elisha had been called hallelujah to carry out even david do you know amen that it was samuel that prepared david to become the king of israel tell me that man the one that god called and anointed and sent hallelujah and went with the anointing without connecting to certain grace certain people on earth to build them they always end up in the wrong way check the scripture is this is it something Samuel was anointed by God powerful anointing but look at it what am I talking about I'm talking about God aligning us to the house of wisdom the expression of wisdom is the manifestation amen of elders at the gate when we talk about elders we're not talking about people who abuse authority we're talking about people that can infuse into our spirit what we need what we need to carry what we need to birth what we need hallelujah to mashal the grace that heaven has given to us or else you're hearing a sound but your sound is muffled so so you are speaking things that does not call people to action you are saying things that does not align people that does not position even your own grace and and and, and ability amen to function but you're speaking you're speaking you see i'm well positioned i understand my position where i am that's why i'm not i'm not insecure because i know people who people who understand their grace and their calling are the people looking for me looking for me to align them looking for me to impact them as much as i love you know I, I i love children i love young people you know i love you know people who are very zealous but i'm not called to them i'm called to those who already know god calls me god has something for me to do that's why most time you know a lot of ministry ministers are connecting to us because they can see I need the grace in the life of this man i need something that that i can i need this man to build me up that's why because if if i begin to handle you you would just think this guy no no he's too hard he's too difficult no it's because i'm i'm prepping you i'm gonna break you and remold you and realign you and get you ready hallelujah even when the enemy sees you he runs that is my assignment that's my assignment prepare people not the people who do not understand that's why you know if you want to i will tell you go and read some materials that we've already written you want to understand purpose you can't be reading mouse maro and think you want to align with me because you will be on you wouldn't understand what purpose is that's a purpose from you know a junior level 
The purpose of God, hallelujah, is terror. The purpose of God, excuse me, the purpose of God is not terror. It's not one way. It's not, it's not permanent. The purpose of God, hallelujah, lead you from one dimension to another. Because we deal with purpose via the prophetic sight. We're not dealing with purpose based on, well, there's a need. No, you can't deal with purpose based on need. <laughs> now that's Miles Moreau. I'm sorry to say I respect the man. He's a man of God. He's a man of grace. But purpose cannot be based on need. Purpose must be established, amen, on the advanced prophetic expression and progression of God's intention. Have you noticed that in every season of your life, there are different things that God calls you to do? So if somebody benchmark your life to one to one aspect you never come into the fullness and each season of your purpose each season of your migration hallelujah has different resources some of you were not in my life you know 10 years ago 15 years ago when your season end there they led you to a different path. They say, you now you need to go the way of Isaiah Phillips. He will prepare you. He will prep you for the next phase of your life. So if you don't understand that, you see, you will die where you are, thinking you fulfill purpose. Meanwhile, your soul is, your spirit is still crying. I want something more, but you don't know what you want. You can, nobody, nobody helps you to give a voice to that thing on the inside. That's why you have, that's why you've come to me. That's why you know me. That's why heaven brought you, amen, my path. That's why you read some of the things you're talking, we're talking about you like, is this for real? Yes, it's for real. You become like a child again. All right. Where you were before, you were, you know, you, you, you were the leader of them. But when you connect to this man, it's like, excuse me, it's like you don't know anything. No, it's not, it's not God trying to whip you. It's just God saying there are realms and advancements. There are hierarchies in, in your life. And you've got to allow me to unveil those things to you. All right, that's for somebody, I guess, because that's not part of the line of my thought. But I guess God wanted somebody to hear that. All right, we're dealing with something. We're dealing with God bringing us into a day where we can have clarity, clarity of sound, clarity of voice. All right. But that clarity begins from a point where they first of all shut our voice from speaking. If you think because you were a voice, amen, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you, you were doing great things, you know, sometimes back and God was using you and suddenly you think you're going to be a voice in, in this new day. Sorry, you lie. You have to go via. That's why this is a day of transition. Listen to this. How you respond to what God is saying will define how quick, amen, you will, you will finish your transition. Some transition may just take five days. Some may take five months. But I know one thing God told us. God told us, I said it a few days ago. God told us that this new day will take 10 days for, excuse me, for, well, 10 days is, I think, I think is the, is the, is the, is the word in the spirit. But 10, 10 years will take 10 years for maturation. That's what God told us. Amen. Late last year and early this year, even before the corona began, that this year, amen, is the beginning of a new day. Bef this is before the corona began so the corona did not define to us the new day we've been picking the signal we've been preparing ourselves go back to some of the things that we've said late last year early this year you will see that i said it in fact when we talk about vision 2020 i said this thing is going to take us 10 full full years for us to come to the maturation so this is not the time to be running with men feeling I'm tired. No, it's time to run, amen, and get yourself prepared to run with horses. We've got to have the capacity to climb the hill of God again. Hallelujah. Let's not depend on the fact that we call down fire. No, now we want to bring down rain. The, the dynamics of bringing down fire is totally different from the dynamics of, amen, engaging the, the, the realm, hallelujah, of bringing down rain. Is our dynamics the spirit of God is opening our eyes? So, if we don't have a, a mature voice in the house, if we don't have a mature prophetic advanced voice in the house, we would think because amen, we call down fire amen, and we have judged the prophets of Baal, so every other thing should just fall in line. No, it doesn't work like that. We saw. The scriptures showed us, the word of the Lord showed us that Elijah engaged, amen, Mount Camel again the second time. Hallelujah. And he placed his head between his two knees, amen, and began to, and began to engage heaven again. You would think, I mean, if this guy just engaged heaven, he just called down fire. God just moved. God just approved. God, <laughs> 
protocols protocols amen we are learning the ways of the prophetic we are learning amen the acts of the spirit we are learning something about the dynamics amen of our spiritual connection amen and position and we are learning amen more about spiritual government and authority if you are going to bring back rain if you're going to see amen the economy of god restore back to the land again you have to come into the day of perfection again seven times hallelujah the bible says elijah prayed and at the seventh time the bible says the seven finally came and said i see you see i see i see the forming i see the formation of the cloud the cloud there amen are people the cloud there represent amen the 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 the, the, the resource the economy of heaven the bible said for we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses alabai, alabai, shayanda. surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses therefore we are not shaking we are not moved because we know that we are not alone elijah was not alone he hallelujah heaven was 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 manifesting a new day there was a formation there was a coming listen to this what has not been formed in heaven can never become a formation in the earth whatever is formed amen in heaven becomes amen a, our position of alignment amen and authority the formation of the cloud hallelujah in the heavens rising connecting with the sea means that god was ready amen to bring forth to produce amen to release his economy into the earth again are you seeing why we need to have a clarity of sound the word sound there represent the prophetic voice oh hallelujah thank you jesus in the case of a lifeless thing that makes no sound such as pipe and harps how will anyone know that's what we want to do we want to know the sound must be able to give us insight to know the sound must be able to call us to action the sound must be able to align our hearts the sound that we are, we are hearing must awake something on the inside when you hear a prophetic sound you must align yourself when you hear the sound of god something on the inside of you must know how to prophesy when you hear the sound of heaven something on the inside of you must know how to command how to release how to declare how to prophesy takes maturity to know how to distinguish sound there are people who have the ears for sound there are those who they don't know they don't know i've got i've got the ears for sound oh lay baba something something is happening here lebro gozayando you must have the ears for sound sound hallelujah releases releases hallelujah frequencies sound releases dimensions sound hallelujah is a reflection of a call to action you're not just listening to music you're listening to a sound every music hallelujah is a message that steers a sound in your spirit either to engage or to withdraw or to realign or to be trained or to be built what sound amen is over your life right now what listen the sound over your life will define the formation of the cloud gathering over you over your space what is the sound over your life don't tell me you don't know because if you don't know then you are you don't understand amen how to how to come out of the ark if we don't hear amen the particular sound that demands us listen how do you think how do you think noah knew the first thing to do when he came out of the ark how do you think that noah knew that the first thing he needs to do amen after coming out of the ark god did not tell him to build an altar <laughs> check the scripture nobody told noah you see that's what i'm talking about that you know what to do at every given interval at every given occasion that you know you, you know you, you, you're no longer children tossed through and fro 
You don't longer wait for somebody to tell you, you know, when to jump and when not to jump. You don't know. You don't wait for somebody to tell you if you should pay your tithe, don't pay your tithe, or give offer, or don't pay. No, no, no. You know in your heart, not because somebody said it, but because you have come to maturation. You've come to an understanding. You've come earlier to the requirement of the law. You act. Your life has become one with the truth. Your life has become one, amen, with the sound of heaven. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible says the first thing he did, he built an altar. And the altar opened the portal. Heaven spoke. The Bible says, and the Lord made a covenant with the earth. There are actions that we will do that will trigger things in the spirit. Nobody tells you that because you have been interacting in the spirit you've been connecting in the spirit hallelujah something about you amen has become one with the spirit you always know what to do the bible says that we are no longer children we're no longer it's a child that you will take that you will begin you'll be telling every day I, did you brush your teeth this morning so that's what i'm doing to my children because they are still children because the children are prone to forget Samuel, did you brush your did you brush your mouth this morning? Did you brush your teeth this morning? Did you uh, yeah? There are certain things they've learned because you've been telling them. There are those things they forget, so you have to remind them again. You have to remind them again. You have to remind them. You have to keep reminding them again and again and again until it becomes part and parcel of their life. You have to remind them. Did you brush your teeth? Did you brush? Did you no no? Yes. Oh, daddy, yes, I did. Oh, I I did not. Okay, go brush your teeth. You understand? But when you come of age, it means that that knowledge, that truth, has become part and parcel of your life. You are no longer children. Nobody tells you what is right or from what is wrong. The Bible says, "Amen." The things of God are now engraved. He said, "The days are coming. I will engrave." my truth in their heart you will not need a teacher to tell you a day is coming i will engrave my word in their heart these are the days the holy spirit will will, will steer you will spoil you you will know what to do he said on that day you will not need to worry about what to say the spirit will steer all of this takes amen you come into the house of one that will train you you need to be trained for you to become a master in anything you need to be trained you need to be you need to be under the tutors never be ashamed to embrace the ministry of tutors and on the time pass, amen, people have abused the church. But yes, share the Lord. I am raising for myself shepherds that will feed my people with knowledge, truth, and integrity. Sally Bayando. God will not lead you to a house of charlatans. If you're seeking for, if your heart is crying for, if you're yearning and panting for God, if your heart is seeking for Christ, listen to this, you will not bow to the Antichrist. Because, because the moment the Antichrist shows something on the, in, the inside of you, you say, ah, this one is a charlatan. Don't go. You know why people are deceived? Because they don't know what they're searching for. Let me repeat what I've said. You know why people are deceived? Because they don't know what they are looking for. If you know what you're looking for is Christ. If Jesus Christ of Nazareth is what you're searching for. Not miracle. Not, not blessing. Not the God of miracle today, today, today. But if you are looking, you are searching for Christ. Listen to this. When the evil, when false prophets, when false apostles, when false God knows who. Come on. The Holy Spirit will tell you. uh uh, uh have you noticed it was God who led, who led Saul to the house of Aeneas? They will always connect you to the right place. And as you respond, you will become. A lie, a lie, Elisha responded. He didn't fight. 22 years after, he took the place of Elijah. There are no vacuums in the spirit. Don't be, don't be, don't be tired of what God is doing right now. God is asking you to realign, to relocate, to change, amen, to reconnect. I hear the man of God say, it's time to go back to your churches. The corona is over. I said, no, it's not the time to go back to your churches. It's time to go to where the spirit of God is leading you. There is no permanent church. 
for we have not a continuous city we're searching for the one that is to come there is always the next dimension of the next order every man of God should know this every tool every true servant of God every shepherd should know this that there are no permanent people nobody has a permanent uh, permanent member no yes as you respond you will become my dear sister as you respond you will become what heaven has ordained for you you can delay the process because you are battling that's why the most important thing in your life is the ability to hear the voice of God and it doesn't mean the fact that you, you you've heard the voice of God that you will respond no sometimes they will help you to connect you to people that will help you to affirm and confirm what you have heard that's why we need each other that's why we need each other you've heard God but you're not sure because sometimes when you hear God he's like this cannot be God so you know what God does he sends people to confirm what you have heard Wow sometimes it could be Isaiah it could be me just preaching like this so many of the things that I'm saying I'm confirming things in your spirit I'm not just teaching you and just telling you things no I'm confirming things I'm affirming things yes then you know truly God speaks yes because you never told me those things but God uses me to confirm that is to encourage you to do more to align the more to his voice to pray more because every time you pray heavens open and you hear God that's what prayer does praise not just you amen you know talking to God praise also God talking back to you <laughs> it's a two-way thing praise not you just amen bombarding heaven no heaven also want to say Shh, be quiet can I speak now it's my time to speak they will speak to you they will tell you you will hear the voice behind you leading you on the path to go you will not be confused there are no confusion in the spirit if you are still confused about it take time more to pray if you say, you say, I don't know what to pray. I've prayed all the prayer. No, stop praying in the spirit. What are you doing? You are fine-tuning the sound. Sometimes the sound is still muffled. You know, while I was growing up, and I'm still growing, in, growing up in the Lord, but I'm saying, as a teenager, while I was, you know, growing up, I mean, I prayed three hours in tongues. I made up, I prayed three hours in tongues. Three hours I'm praying. Sukatayando. Then the tongues change. Then you see, at a time, the tongue gets to this level. I mean, you, you have all kinds of gears in tongue. And then you change from gear one. You enter gear two. You enter three. Four, gear four. Five, six. Seven. You think you can, you think you can speed. I've seen gear 12 in the spirit. you keep you keep changing you at a point when you finish your 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 physical strength is gone but you become a giant in the spirit when you pray in tongues and and all your human strength is gone that's when you become a giant in the spirit <laughs> when, you know when you finish praying and you have no power again you, you like you're like you're like a jellyfish <laughs> I that's where you become a giant in the spirit. That's where you become a giant in the spirit. Come on, friends. Heaven is bringing us into a new day. Araba hatayam. Come on. Ale baba prophesy, prophesy. Le baba shanda. Do you know that sound can prophesy? Do you know the sound can prophesy? The man of God needed to prophesy, but he needed the, the instrumentation of the sound. He said, get me a mistrel. Let the mistrel prophesy so that I can connect. You glide upon the sound that you're picking. Mando, robo, kapatiza, yelendo, kaputuzi, mbragaze, yeyanda. 
what are you doing when you begin to pray in the, in the spirit you are clearing the air you're clearing the, the, the atmosphere you are removing amen, all the toxic sound all the interferences you're removing the Jezebel. sometimes it will take you an hour to clear the atmosphere until you have that clear signal in the spirit if you don't hear it continue to pray when you are done you will find yourself at the throne <laughs> at the throne room they say welcome welcome <laughs> sit down among them take your seat lebra gasikiando talimo yanto at that point you have entered into the realm of immortality immortality is not just about amen you know the the, the, the consummation amen of your physical you know flesh immortality is when your spirit becomes one with the spirit of christ when that which is of the spirit hallelujah has been consumed totally at that time you can say anything heaven will sanction it when your will become one with the will of God, he said, Ask, ask the Father anything, anything, anything. When your will becomes united with the will of God, when the sound, amen, has been fine tuned, now you hear God. God, yeah, not when you are hearing, you are hearing, you know, things happening in another realm in the heavens. You are hearing all the all the war going on. No, no, no. You've passed all of that. Now, hallelujah. You are enter into the spirit. You are enter, you are in the you are in the spirit in the day of the Lord. <laughs> yes, he said, I was in the spirit in the last day, and I heard a voice says, Come up higher, and I will show you. That is where the show's destiny. That's where they reveal, amen, things to us about nations. That's where they reveal, amen, the next dimension of your life, of your children. Hallelujah. In the spirit, you can see the next 10 years. Hallelujah. Of your life. In the spirit, you can see the next 20 years. Things yet unborn. Things yet unseen. Things that have not entered into the hearts of men. You can pick them. Why? Because you have connected to the spirit. You have become one with Christ. He who has not spirit of the Lord, he who does not have the spirit of the Lord, is not of him. But there is a company of them that have become one with the Lord. That's where the Bible says, ask anything, command me. You don't get to that dimension of commanding heaven and asking things if you have not become one. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by a, a continual engagement with your spirit. You see, when you do that, your soul has no choice <laughs> to align, to submit. Your soul surrender and submit to the frequency of heaven. At that moment, you're no longer hungry. At that moment, the things that buff that bothered men, that you know, that baffled men on earth has no more grip. Sin has no more hold over you. At that time, hallelujah, you have become spirits. Every part of you respond to the sound of God. At that time, amen, you have become like a wind. Toss here and there. You blow here and there. Hallelujah. You become a wind. He that is born of God is like a wind. At that time, you have been born of him. That is the sound of the spirit. That is a proclamation of heaven upon the earth. It says, the Egyptians you see today, Egyptians represent authority in the earth. He said, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. Lebaha. Baraba sayakondo bohoskeya. Megando velele subravene kompradaya. Spirit of the Lord. Mando robo shekebe. Mando robo kabayande de debo. Come on, lay hands on your head. Speak. Baroko sige. Manga li baba shayando. Lay hands on your tummy. Melemo sike alalama hatayando. Kivelendo. 
Marado si ke barando baye kalalala shada baka ali go yanda rabo. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Take us. I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. This is the day of the Lord. It's a day of the spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is of the Lord. There is a law of sin and death. But there is a law of life in Christ Jesus. Come up to the higher law. Come up higher to the higher law of the spirit. Let your life this day be governed, be ordered by the spirit. Let your life this day be ruled by the spirit. Let your life this day be directed by the spirit. Yield to the instructions of the spirit. Can you hear the sound of the spirit? Can you hear the clear sound of the spirit? Not a muffled sound. If it's still muffled, you need to take time in the house of them that will fine tune you. Let heaven fine tune you. Surrender yourself to the ministries of the spirit that you may be fine tuned, that you may be in tune, that you may be connected, that your frequency may become one with the frequencies of heaven allow the Lord to take you glide upon the wings of the wind let the flappings off yes Karabashanda, the wings of the eagle bring you to the place of his good pleasure let your life in this brand new day begin to understand the sound of the spirit Thank you, Father. I prophesy into your life this day. To prophesy means to bring into bear the eternal intentions of God. To prophesy means to bring into view the eternal counsels of God. To prophesy means to take delivery of God's intention and superimpose it upon time to prophesy means to realign a people a city a nation an individual to connect to what heaven has designed and ordained for them i prophesy into your life this day into your space this day that you're no longer the person that connected some hours ago or two or from hour, or hour, an hour ago or minutes ago I declare right now that the heavens are shifting over your space over your life I declare right now that you have been opened up to a new dimension of understanding I proclaim and I declare this day that heaven is breathing into you again I declare right now that you are rising from that sense of lameness I speak to your limb to your to your to your limb knees and feet I say strength in the name of Jesus it's day to rise up is day to stand this is your day for mobility move to the place of God's intentions for your life you will not die in this place but you will advance you will go forward you will claim you will you will reclaim you will understand and you will indeed eat of the fruit of this new day may you begin to rise up in the spirit of the voice of heaven over your life a prophesy into your life i declare you begin to see with newness you begin to hear the sound of this new day over your life over your home over your family over your ministry you will begin to walk in the power of innovations and creativity i declare right now that your faith is being boosted 
I declare that you are rising up in the new understanding of the demand of God for your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you've been born for such a time as this. You are aligned and realigned, calibrated, yes, built up, yes, for such a time as this. The spirit of edification is upon you. You have been built, you have been empowered, you have been resourced in the name of Jesus to go forth out there and represent the glory of God. This is your day. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Take your place among them that have been invited to the table of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, behold, yesterday is past. It's a new day. Position your sight to begin to wait and see that which the Lord, hallelujah, is giving to you. Open your hands and receive of the gifts of heaven. Let the glory of God begin to transform your life as you enter into his light. The days of darkness are over. Step into the brightness of the sun shining from within you until the day dawns. May the day of the Lord begin to dawn upon you. May the day of the Lord begin to dawn upon you. May the day of the Lord begin to dawn upon you. May every cloud begin, yes, to be lifted. I declare in the name of Jesus is raining into your space in the name of Jesus. Is raining into your space, into your life. Every sense of patchiness and dryness in the name of Jesus and barrenness is over. I declare, arise Zechariah. It's time to bring forth. Arise Elizabeth. It's time to bring forth. Arise Mary. It's time to bring forth. I give to you the seed of the new day. Take your place among them that are called champions. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. There is a place for you on the table. Daughter of Zion, there is a place for you. There is a place for you. Contribute. It's time to contribute your quota. You have a place. You have a standing. You have a call. Sound. Touch your ears. Say with me. In the name of Jesus. This day. My ears is calibrated to hear. The sound of God. I am picking the waves of the spirit. I am in tune with the proclamations of heaven over my life. I am no longer confused. I am no longer disdain. This day I can hear because what you hear will define how you respond. I hear the voice of God. I hear the mind of God. I know what God has planned for me. Plans of good are not evil. I advance in Jesus name. Amen. Oh hallelujah. Speed it out. Sparando copayem de rebaha. Subrave no compra gunushta yende bahi kalabasu. Grace. Grace. Great grace upon the house of Yahweh. Oh, hallelujah. We honor you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Lord, we magnify you. We worship in the beauty of your holiness. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah.
has a voice follow him oh hallelujah 